Your name is uh, Eva, yeah. and your last name is York, yeah. and you live in this city, yeah. and your house number is 613 6th Street. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. You're going home to be well. Oh, in the name of Jesus Christ, Every spirit of loneliness, depression, rejection, come out! Anywhere you are! I said anywhere you are! 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 You're back on the floor. I say you're back on the floor. Yeah, boy. Hey, hey. Hey, who are you? Quién eres tú? The Western world had never had a visitor quite like this before. I can't make you free, only Jesus can. I command every demonic power, every spirit of sorcery, every evil spirit, every satanic spirit that is inside that man, inside that woman, come out in the name of Jesus. Evil spirit tormenting you, every evil spirit that has been coming after you, every demon that has been ruling over you, in the name of Jesus, I command you evil spirit to come out. I arrest every satanic power, every strong man, every scorpion, I command you, leave her, go. One by one. Go. Go. And never return. Why don't you why do you want me to get away? Why? Uh-uh. No, 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 don't worry. No. You don't you don't like me? I don't like you either. Now you're going to leave her. Out! Come on! And never return. You want you want her to go? But Jesus doesn't want her to go. She's stupid, you told her to go home. I told her not to come here. You told her not to come. Died. She should have died. died. You messed up. Leave her. Leave her. You animal, leave her. Come out of her. Serpent, come out. We crush your head in the name of Jesus. I crush your head in the name of Jesus. I crush your head in the name of Jesus. Never return. You will never kill her. You will not destroy her. Take all the infirmities you have brought on her in Jesus' name. It was a mistake. It was a mistake. Stay there. Stay there. How many of you are inside of her? Um, if you talk, I will not come. If you talk, I won't come. If you don't speak, I'll come. I'll come. Okay, how many of you are inside? Okay now, every one of you, leave her. In the name of Jesus, you will not kill her. Your time has expired. Hallelujah. Jesus name. Hallelujah. Me? Why? Huh? Too bright. Too bright. Not just bright, I'm burning. She will burn. It doesn't matter 
if you are 50, 100, the fire shall consume you. Yeah. And she's made free in the name of Jesus. Woman of God, come give me a hug. You're free now. Huh? Don't thank me, thank Jesus. I can't make you free, only Jesus can. Somebody shall prophesy. Prophesy. The angel of the Lord stood by me, took my hand, took me, and I saw visions of God. I saw this woman holding two stars in her hands. And when you look at Genesis, you understand that stars mean sons, the moon means mother, half moon means daughter, and the sun always means father. I saw your daughter standing with two stars. How many children does she have? Two sons. I saw you going to court. Are you listening to me? Yes, Papa. And the court was not really for you. I saw them discussing about taking a child from you. Yes, Papa, it's true. I saw a little girl yes, Papa, on your true. left hand. And I saw that it was a legal battle whereby you want your child. But as we are speaking, your child is already snatched from your hands. True. Right now, your prayer is, Lord, bring me back my child. Because everything that can be put against you to make you unfit, to look like you're crazy, to look like you cannot take care of your child, has happened. You are on the losing end of this. But the Lord says you are coming out on top. Yeah. The angel of the Lord took me to 2017. Are you listening to me, woman of God? Yes. In 2017 was a bad year for you. Yes. It was a year of tears for you. Yes. And this is in the month of August. Prophesy. And it was 20 something, 20 what? Seven. What happened in 27? My husband passed. I'm hearing a phone ring and I hear them saying, Miss Johnson, come quickly. Oh my God. Prophesy. Huh? Prophesy. In order for the blessing to flow in our own children, the Lord had picked one of our children and said this one will be the promise carrier that will share it with the rest and when i looked i said can you tell me who this is that i was looking at the angel of the lord told me tell her marcus will be blessed <laughs> woman of god who is marcus marcus is my first born this past year was a very difficult year for you because it was like you went down yeah it was a very struggling year for you emotionally and mentally you felt drained yes. but the lord said tell heather in 2023 that's your last name little sister come here yes you just go stand next to his wife the lord would say i will anoint isaiah 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 huh? yeah. what is yours name. your name is isaiah yes. immediately instead of your wife i saw my little sister standing next to you what is your name eva Last year, this past year, this young boy is supposed to die. Yes. Huh? Please don't tell me. I know. I'm telling you because I was there. My guy threw the f bomb. He's shocked. Come stand next to me, prophet. He's shocked. Look at him. Look at his face. Huh? Do you know I'm a prophet? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is very simple. I just want to pray for the baby. I saw the grace of God on this baby when I was. Now, hear me. Écoute-moi bien. 
Si tu es spirituel, tu verras que l'atmosphère n'est pas la même. Je veux que tu sois prêt parce que je vois des choses magnifiques être changées pour ton bien. Ton je veux que Dieu te touche d'une manière surnaturelle pour que non seulement tu reçoives ce que tu as besoin pour ton niveau supérieur mais pour que tu puisses recevoir également le fuel qui t'amènera dans un autre monde qui t'amènera dans une nouvelle dimension cela est important pour toi maintenant peu importe qui est à côté de toi. Cela n'est pas important. Concentre-toi sur Jésus. Lève les mains. Quelque chose est sur le point de se produire. Quand les anges se déplacent avec moi, les démons n'aiment pas ça. Ça va les distraire. C'est parce que... Je veux que tu lèves tes mains et ne regarde personne. Le protocole, il y a des choses qui vont se passer, amenez-moi les gens. Vous amenez les gens. Yeah! Hey! Hey! I command you. Je vous commande. I command you. Je vous ordonne. You know my language. Vous connaissez mon langage. I am Lovi Elias. Je suis Lovi Elias. I am a prince of the heavens. Je suis un prince du ciel. Anointed by God. Oui, par Dieu. You know why I came. Vous savez pourquoi je I suis venu. I came to arrest you. Je suis venu vous arrêter. And to send you back where you came from. Et vous renvoyer de là où vous venez. I command you. Je vous commande. I command you. Je vous commande. In the name of Jesus. Dans le nom de Jésus. Come here. You cannot hide. Vous ne pouvez pas vous cacher. You cannot hide. Vous ne pouvez pas vous cacher. Where I am, you cannot hide. Vous ne pouvez pas vous cacher. Who can hide from the presence of Elohim? Qui peut se cacher de la présence d'Elohim? Come here. Venez là. I said come here. J'ai dit venez là. I said come here. J'ai dit venez là. Where are you? Où êtes-vous? Where are you? Où êtes-vous? You are part. Come here. Come here. Where are you? Come here, come Où here. Vous? Venez là. Witchcraft, sorcellerie, sorcery, sorcellerie, demonic powers, puissance démoniaque, confusion, confusion, generational curse, malédiction générationnelle, sorcery, sorcellerie, sickness, maladie, chronic sickness, maladie chronique. Where are you? Where are you? Où Where are you? Vous? In little children. Dans les petits enfants, in grown ups, dans les adultes, in men of God, dans les hommes de Dieu, in women of God, dans les femmes de Dieu, in the anointed ones of God, dans ceux qui sont ouin par Dieu. Come here, come here. Venez, venez. Don't play with me. Come here. Spiritual wife, femme, spiritual husband, femme spirituelle, spiritual wife, ah, épouse spirituelle, spiritual husband, épouse spirituelle. Come here. Venez. I command you. Je vous commande. I have power over you. J'ai pour la puissance sur vous. Come here, come here. Bien là. Come here. Leave her. <laughs> I never come back. Je vais te détruire. You have no power. Je vais te détruire. Are you sure? Fire on your feet. 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 You can't do nothing. 
Salvare Jean Power. 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 Lift the man up. Out. Everything in you. Come out. Come out. Leave him. Leave him. Leave him. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. I break the covenant of him. Thank you, Lord. Au nom de Jésus. Tu es libre. Listen to me. Écoutez-moi bien. Listen to me. Écoutez-moi bien. If a prophet comes to you, si un prophète vient pour vient te voir, he comes to make you cross the Red Sea. Il vous fait traverser la mer rouge. The Egyptians should not follow you. Les Égyptiens ne doivent pas te suivre. If I prophesy to you, si je te prophétise, and demons are still on you, et les démons sont toujours sur toi, how will the prophecy be fulfilled? Comment est-ce que la prophétie sera accomplie? Receive power. Reçois la puissance. Receive real power. Reçois ta puissance. In the name of Jesus. Dans le nom de Jésus. Say in the name of Jesus. Dis dans le nom de Jésus. Every demonic power. Toute puissance démoniaque. Let it be broken. Qu'elle soit brisée. In the name of Jesus. Dans le nom de Jésus. In the name of Jesus. Dans le nom de Jésus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Jésus. Make me free. Lift your voice. Say, je suis libre. Lève la voix et dis, je suis libre. Dis, je suis libre. Je suis libre. I am free. Au nom de Jésus. Les enfants sont libres. My children are free. Les enfants libre. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Lève la voix. Ze paroste. Ze paroste. Ve para candele misto. Ve para caravanos de nemekita. Le pari banaka. Ze toraba. Ve kratundele misto. Le dosta. Le dosta. Le dosta. Ve makati na mande. Ve tana mandane le nikratos. In Jesus' name, be free. Let those evil spirits. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ashes. Protocol. Understand. Comprenez. That this will be normal. Que cela se deviendra normal. Darkness will never survive in this church. Les ténèbres ne survivront jamais dans cette église. In Jesus' name, come out, come out, come out, leave her. So, fire, 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 out. Fire on your feet, fire, fire. Le feu sur tes pieds. I command you. Je te ordonne. You and all the spirits inside. Toi et tous les esprits à l'intérieur. Don't return. Ne revenez pas. Spiritual husband, go. In the name of Jesus. No, leave her, 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 leave her. Give me that, give me that. Fire of the Holy Spirit. Fire, 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 leave her, leave her, leave her, leave her, leave her. Let her hold it, let her hold it. Fire, 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 fire. Jesus name. Thank you Jesus. Dans le nom de Thank Jésus. you Holy Spirit. Merci Saint Esprit. In Jesus name. Father, thank you. Hey, quiet. Quiet. Go. Never return. Come out. In Jesus name. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. No, no. 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 Go and never return in Jesus' name. You will not kill him. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Leave this young man. Leave this young man. Look, look, look. Look. Regardez. Shh. You have to have so much power. Vous devez avoir tellement de puissance. That demons beg you, they are praying, please. Que les démons vous prient en disant, supplie en disant, s'il te plaît. Why? Why? You have destroyed him. Go and never come back. The Lord te libère. The Lord te dit part et ne revient plus. Hallelujah.
Restore his mind. Thank you, Lord. Help him in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. In 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 five days, you start to talk. You cannot carry the light. Vous ne pouvez pas porter la lumière. Eh? Put the microphone. Put the microphone. Comment tu peux dire que tu marches dans la puissance de Dieu Et tu go, où que tu ailles. Où que tu ailles. Uh -uh. Bring her, bring her. Hey, quiet, quiet, quiet. Lift her. Come out. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. She's free. Put her down. She's free. Prophet Jimmy, le protocole, assurez-vous que les gens qui viennent vers Help moi. Who are the anointed men of God? If you are a man of God, you can come. Si tu es un homme de Dieu, we can't ask the fathers like, you know, the fathers must rest. If you are anointed men of God, come. Si vous êtes des hommes de Dieu, ouin, I want God to give you power also. Et laissez que le come. Seigneur vous donne la puissance aussi. So that aussi. these things will be easy for your ministry. Cela sera facile ensuite pour votre ministère. Because you came to receive the prophetic. This vous is êtes... part of the prophetic. Cela fait partie du prophétique que vous êtes venu recevoir. Not the fathers, the young ones, come. Pas... Young come. Pas les pères, les jeunes. Come. If you are serious about Jesus, come. Si vous êtes sérieux avec Jésus, venez. Come to me. I want to give you something from the Holy Spirit. Je veux vous donner quelque chose de la part du Saint Esprit. Only if you are a member under Prophet Seulement Joel. Seulement si tu es un, un homme de Dieu ou une femme de Dieu. Others, I'll pray for you to receive impartation. I'm Tous talking about autres, those who are with Prophet Joel. Ceux qui sont avec le Prophète Joel. Look at me. Regardez-moi. Set people free. Start praying for people. Commencez à prier pour les gens. Lift him. Let me slow him. Hold my hands up. Jesus' name. No. No. Thank you, Holy Spirit. No. Thank you, Holy Spirit. No. In Jesus' name. No. Free. No. No. Free. Immoral and clean spirit. Thank you, Jesus, that is free from today. Amen. In Jesus' name. Look at me. Look at me. Look here. Regarde -moi. Fire on your head. Fire on your head. Angels don't play games. Les anges ne jouent pas. If you are not called, don't come. Si tu n'es pas appelé, ne viens you pas. Don't want the wrath of God. Je ne veux pas la retirer la colère de Dieu. So if you are not a pastor under si the tu prophet, pas un, pro, un pasteur don't derrière come. le prophète, ne viens pas. You don't want the angels to strike you. Tu ne veux pas que les anges te frappent. Because you'll be a distraction Parce now. Parce que tu es une distraction. This is your daughter. Put the microphone on him. No. Put put the micro. Wait. Oh, put the microphone on him. Put the microphone on on the. Is this your daughter? Put the microphone on him. Yes, she's my daughter. She's your daughter. Where's your daughter? This is your daughter. Est-ce que c'est ta fille? How long has she been like this? Oui, c'est ma fille. That's almost two years. Ça fait deux ans. She gave life to Jesus, but is a bad spirit that is disturbing our whole life. Elle a donné sa vie au Seigneur, mais elle a un esprit mauvais qui l'a dit. You believe Jesus will help you? Yes, I do. Okay. Leave her. Leave her. 
Come out. In Jesus' name. Evil spirit, go. Come out. As the Father's prayer has been heard in heaven, never return in her. In Jesus' name. La prière du Thank Père you, est entendue dans les cieux, ne revient in plus Jesus jamais. Name. Father, your daughter Papa, is free. What is her name? Stiliani. Stiliani. Wake up. Stand up. Stand up. Stiliani, come. Come, help her. Stiliani, stand up. Look Stiliani, at me. Regarde -moi. Are you okay? Est-ce que ça va? You are free. Tu es libre. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's okay. Tout va Thank bien. You. Your daughter is free. Clap Ta for Jesus. Est libre. Acclame pour Jésus. It's okay. May the Lord Jesus be praised. Look at me. Come on, Jesus. All of it, come out. Come out. All of it, come out. Snake. Come out. Snake. Come out. So. Come out. Serpent. So. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Go and never return. Never Va enter this body again. Plus jamais. In Jesus' name. Dans le nom de Jésus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Merci, Saint Esprit. Merci, Turn Père. Over. She's gonna cough. She's free. Elle est libre. Go. Come out. Come out. Sors. Come out. Sors. No. Why no? no Pourquoi non? Why? Pourquoi? Because Jesus wants her. Parce she belongs Jésus to Jesus. Veut. Jesus loves her. Jésus and you can't do anything about tu it. Ne peux rien faire. He sent me to set her free. Now go. Il m'a dit de la libérer. Maintenant tu sors. All of you. In Jesus Chacun d'entre vous, dans le nom de Jésus. Thank you, Jesus. Merci, Seigneur. She is divorced from you. Elle est divorcée In de toi. Dans le nom de Thank Jésus. You, Holy Spirit. Merci Saint-Esprit. Merci Saint-Esprit. Au nom de Jésus. In Jesus name. Au nom de Jésus. In Jesus name. Au nom de Jésus. Light be. Thank you Holy Spirit. Thank you Father. She is free. You are free young lady stand up. This is the power of God. Ça c'est la puissance de Dieu. Give him to me mama. Donnez-moi le maman. Bring him to me. Amenez-moi le maman. Lift him. Levez-le. Lift him to me. Amenez-moi le. Look. Look at me. Hey. Regarde-moi. Come out. So. Come out. Push. So. Never return. Et ne reviens plus. Never again. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. He is free. Il est libre. It's finished. C'est fini. Clap for Jesus. Hallelujah. Acclame pour Jésus. Clap for Jesus. Acclame pour Jésus. Clap for Jesus. Acclame pour Jésus. My brother, stand up. Mon frère, lève-toi. Jesus loves you. Le, Jésus t'aime. Okay. You okay. will never suffer again. Tu ne souffriras plus jamais. Follow Jesus. Suis Jésus. Amen. 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 Dis merci à Jésus. Say thanks to Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Receive the Holy Spirit. Reçois le Saint Esprit. Look at me. Regarde-moi. Thank you, Jesus. This is freedom. Ça c'est la liberté. Stand up. Lève-toi. I command you stand up. Je te Fire commande de te lever. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. One, two, three. One, two, three, like a soldier. Stand up. Lève-toi. Un, deux, trois, comme un soldat. Stand up. One, two. March, march, march. March, 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 march. Up, hands up, hands up, hands up. Les bras en l'air. Hands, hands up. Like a soldier. One, two, Comme un soldat. Three. One, two, three. Un, deux, three. One, two. Yeah. Un, deux, trois. Yeah. Come out and never return. Yeah. Yeah. You cannot yeah. do anything here. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Holy Spirit. Ah. 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 Yeah. From today, ah. she's free. Ah. À partir d'aujourd'hui, ah. tu es libre. Ah. 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 In Jesus name. Dans le nom de ah. Jésus. Clap for Jesus. Acclame, Acclame pour Jésus. What time is it? Okay. Oh, okay, we are almost done. Yes. Don't worry. Wait, let me attend to people first. Come out. Yeah. Yeah. Never yeah. return. Come. Yeah. Yeah. In Jesus' yeah. name. Idols, go. 
Les idoles, sortez. Go. Sortez. In Jesus name. Dans le nom de Jésus. Thank you Jesus. Merci Jésus. Spiritual husband, you are divorced from her. Épouse spirituelle, tu es divorcé d'elle. In Jesus name. Dans le nom de Jésus. Thank you Holy Spirit. Merci Saint Esprit. In Jesus name. Dans le nom de Jésus. One, two, three. Un, deux, trois. Thank you Lord. Merci Seigneur. You are free. Go and sit. You are tu free. es libre. Tu peux aller t'asseoir. Thank you, Jesus. Merci Jésus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. They can't do anything. Thank you, Jesus. Il ne peut rien faire. Thank you, Jesus. Father, thank you. Merci It's Seigneur. C'est terminé. Never return. Ne reviens plus In jamais. Jesus name. Dans le nom de Jésus. Thank you, Jesus. Merci Jésus. It's okay, lift that one, lift that one. It's okay. Turn her over, she's going to throw up. Tournez-la, elle va vomir. There are things in her stomach that will come out. Il y a des choses dans son estomac qui doivent sortir. Come out, all of it. Sort, tout entier. One, two, three. Un, deux, trois. It's finished, leave her. C'est fini, laissez-la là. Don't worry. N'ayez pas peur. Listen to me. Écoutez-moi. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. The angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Sing it with all your heart. What a mighty God we serve. Help them, help them move on. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Sing it with all your hearts. Chantez-le de tout ton cœur. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God. Angels bow. Heaven and earth. She's married to Jesus. I divorce you. I divorce you. I divorce you. I divorce you. In Jesus' name. What a mighty God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I divorce you from every demon, from every idol. Je te laisse là, in Jesus' name. Heaven and earth adore you. In Jesus' name. Worship God, sing to Him. Adore le Seigneur simplement. In Jesus' name. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before Him. Heaven and earth adore Him. You leave something with you. Je veux laisser quelque chose avec vous. Je veux vous donner. That will continue even beyond my time. Et qui continuera au-delà de mon temps. Beyond Papa Joel's time. Au-delà de la de la du temps de Papa Joel. Impact that will carry for generations. Un impact qui restera pour des générations. 
Those who are sick, I heal you in the name of Jesus. Those who are sick, be healed in the name of Jesus. Those who are sick, be healed in the name of Jesus. Those who are sick, be healed in the name of Jesus. Those who are sick, be healed in the name of Jesus. Those who are sick, be healed in the name of Jesus. Those who are sick, be healed in the name of Jesus. Those who are sick, be healed in the name of Jesus. Those who are sick, be healed in the name of Jesus. Those who are sick, be healed in the name of Jesus. Those who are sick, be healed in the name of Jesus. Those who are sick, be healed in the name of Jesus. Those who are sick, be healed in the name of Jesus. Those who are sick, be healed in the name of Jesus. Those who are sick, be healed in the name of Jesus. Those who are sick, be healed in the name of Jesus. Those who are sick, be healed in the name of Jesus. Those who are sick, be healed in the name of Jesus. Those who are sick, be healed in the name of Jesus. Those who are sick, be healed in the name of Jesus. Those who are sick, be healed in the name of Jesus. Those who are sick, be healed in the name of Jesus. Those You are free in the name of Jesus. Libre dans le nom de Jésus. So my name is Elijah Joshua, and I'm from Dayton, Ohio, and born and raised there. We and then we started traveling around as we got older, but. Originated from Dayton, Ohio. My name is Lily Pollard, and I come from Dayton, Ohio too. Born and raised. Um, so we went to Revelation Nights, Miami, and ever since then, as we were leaving, I felt God pulling me to come here. But then I was like, we were just at Revelation Nights, like, what? Like, why do I have to go all the way over there? So then I just, it was on my heart, but I kind of like kept it there. And then for a few months, God just kept giving me dreams and dreams of us being here. And I'm like. Okay, so God, what are you trying to say? <laughs> and so as I kept praying about it, He told us to come here, and I was like, Well, we don't have a way right now, so if we're gonna go, Lord, like, you have to show us how we how we can do it. And of course, God put it together, so we're here. And I wasn't sure what to expect, but I was like, Lord, we're just coming with expectations and have Your way. So here we are today. Yeah, I had. She originated the plan for us coming down here, and I just followed along because we love Prophet Lovey in the Revelation Church since Miami, and we we started watching him over a year ago, me and my mother, and we had uh, begun like you know spreading his word and whatnot, and, like seeing like his uh, his enlightenment and revelation that he brings to a lot of Christians and whatnot, and ever since then we went to go see him in Miami in November. And then coming here, we had high expectations because mm -hmm. we, we know what his church and what he's capable of. So we, we came, it was me and her coming at first, me and my girlfriend, and then my mom ended up calling me when I was at work. And she told us that she was gonna bring her and dad, and then she wanted my oldest brother to come. And then she was like, I just gotta make sure he can, he can come. And then she was praying about it. The Lord had put it on her heart for him to come. And then next couple of days later, he said he was going to come, and so whole plan was rolling at that point. And then we in we in LA now at Revelation Church, so it worked out for us. Yeah. Our God is a good God. Huh? I love you more. Where, where did you come from? Hey, in Ohio. Ohio. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I mean, I like your dreads. Appreciate you. Appreciate you, man. Let me pray for you. Did you come by yourself? But my girlfriend and my family right there, my mom, dad, and my brother Darius, with the long dreads. Okay, never, never tell me names, just come. Yes, sir. Come, come. Ah. Go to the front, I'll pray for you. Go, go to the front. Go, go to the front. He was walking past, and I just knew, because I saw him looking at my brother and my mom, and I was like, And then when the lady started, uh, to, he brought her out and then was praying over her. I could tell, you know, it's, it's a lot going on. So his attention is like getting took in different areas and whatnot. So something in me was just like, just say something to him. Like, <laughs> he's just a person. And then I was just like, you know, we love you, prophet, love you. And then as soon as I said that, he looked at me. And then I knew it clicked in my head, like, I'm glad I said something, because now I can get it rolling a little. Because we knew coming here, I told my mom, I made a joke to her because I said, when he calls me up there, I'm going to make sure if he asks me if I'm with anybody else, I'm going to be like, nah, it's just me and her. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we already knew from the get-go, before we even came to L.A., that we were going to be called up and pro uh, prophesied over and be able to get prayed over. So when he looked at me, he brought us up there, I already knew. Like, it was just ordained really just the Holy Spirit moving already in, in our family and knowing things you know so yes. mm. hello pray for this right here prophesy my name is Elias what's your name Elijah yeah <laughs> 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 God will take what is mine and give it to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
God will impart you the prophetic. God will give you the prophetic. Are you listening to me? God will give it to you. Amen. God will strengthen you. And the hand of the Most High God will rest on you. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So, ever since I started watching Prophet Lovey, my family makes jokes because I got the dreads and whatnot. And then they say, I like, I'm trying to be like him. But I'm like, I'm not trying to be like him. I'm just, I've always liked this before I met him. It's just knowing that somebody can have so much personality and still be like a Christian and still be doing what they're doing, it made me more comfortable with being myself and not having to, you know, change and be all preppy, you know, be have the swag and the, and the designer and stuff like that. That's my, like, that's my forte, how me and my older brother are. And so we got mix it with the medicine and be able to do it like that. So when he had uh, like prophesied over me, I already knew, like, cause yesterday we were at the mall and I put on a jacket that he had at Revelation night. So it's just the Holy <laughs> Spirit just God. being funny. Yeah. And I put on a jacket that he had in Miami, the same Gucci jacket that he had with the stars and stuff on crystals. And then my mom was like, look, you, should, like, you, should, like, you look like love you for real. And then next day we hear, and then he, sa- he tells me like, you're gonna, everything that's in me is gonna be in you. And then, Praying and saying, uh, saying all that just it hit like it hit really hard because I've been mm-hmm. praying for that, and I've been praying for just to be an outlet for the youth because I already have like group chats and whatnot that I've started with over like 50 people that I just try to you know pour into as much as I can, pray for them, and we lose some, we gain some, but it's all in the making. I'm just trying to save souls out here, me and her. So that's that's pretty much the wraps of that. And, uh, yeah, mm-hmm. and just saying how God orchestrated it all and seeing him plant those little seeds coming along, but then seeing Lovey bring it to actual life and watering them and just preparing us for the things that God has for us. It's mm. amazing, yeah. it's amazing. Amen. Is your dad and mom here? Okay. I want you to do something. Don't be angry with me. It's what God is telling me. Is it okay? Yes. Change your last name. Last name. Are you listening to me? Change your last name to Joshua. Amen. Amen. For what to happen to happen, it can't happen with the last name you have. It is a spiritual conflict. Wow. Huh? Wow. Amen. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Let me tell you what I heard. Prophesy. 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 All of a sudden, I was in Mecca. Mm. I ain't been there yet. Uh, no, I'm telling you where I am, hey. not you. <laughs> All of a sudden, I was in Mecca. And I heard people praying, Muslims praying. And the Lord said, this name means is what the name Muhammad used to call people who followed him. Mm. Mm. He called those who followed him Abdul. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Prophesy. Prophesy. <laughs> what is Abdul? Abdullah. 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 Rechange that name. Prophesy. You can celebrate better. Prophesy. Wrong spirit. Trust me. I know. Wrong spirit. No. Trust you. I trust you. Amen. If it could be redeemable, I would tell you this one is not. Okay. Yes. Exit. Yes. Because where God wants, the way God wants to use you. Yeah, see, yeah, yeah. Names are access. And if you bear the wrong name, you cannot become what God wants you to be. This is why Jacob could not become what God wants him to be, even though God walked with him. God called him to be Israel. As long as he was Jacob, he cannot become a nation. Wrong name will keep you from where God wants you to go. 
Amen. When the Lord appeared to me, he told me, for this way I want to take you, you cannot carry your father's house name. He changed my last name. Amen. Are you listening to me? Yes. Yes. God will empower the whole family, but the mark of God is on you. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. God will prosper you financially. Dangerously financially. Ah. If there's never been millionaires in your family, you are about to be the first one. Yay. And after you, many more will start appearing and popping Amen. up. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I always say this. You serve God faithfully, God take, takes care of you. Yeah. The reason why men and women of God mostly struggle is because you are not given a commission. So God doesn't fund mission trips he did not ordain. Mm. Wow. Wow. God funds Thank you, Jesus. what he ordained. Yes, sir. What is not ordained, God doesn't want anything to do because it's a waste of time. You want to prosper, be where God wants you to be. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift, I'm coming to you. Power, the way power will hit you. You say this, your brother? Yes, sir. Lift, lift your hands. Lift your hands. What, what did you say his name is, Derek? Darius. De Darius. Yes, sir. Uh-huh. Yes, sir. Father, touch him. Free him. Let every negative power of the enemy that is to hold him back be broken in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Man of God, Amen. you are a great man. Lift your hands. You're a great man. I want God to give you long life. Amen. Okay. I want God to give you long life. Amen. A life that is fruitful and long. Amen. And um great increase is coming to you. Thank you. Amen. Because you are also called of God. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But the enemy has been trying to affect your health. Amen. But God says that your life will be extended. Thank you, Lord. And um, what I saw in my vision was kind of strange because I saw your heart beating mm -hmm. strangely. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't like normal heartbeat. Mm -hmm. It was different. It would switch up. Mm -hmm. The Lord said that will end today. Amen. 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 But God is anointing you for business. Thank you, Lord. Big, big business. Yes. Huge business. Yes. Now, I don't know why. I don't know how. I'm just telling you what I've been shown. Amen. I saw you walking in construction sites. Yes, <laughs> I'm a general huh? contractor. Huh? I'm a general contractor. Professor. <laughs> Amen. Uh, Professor. <laughs> I saw I saw you walking in construction site and you are looking at homes, hey, this uh, paint is not right. Yes. This, this one, fix this floor here. Do this, do this, do that. Yes. Hallelujah. The Lord said, what is about to put in your hands will shock you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. There's an Abrahamic unction on you. It, it was, um, so everything that he said was on point. Like, even when he was talking to my dad about his um, him being in construction, my dad's a general kind. I work for my dad. So I'm a painter and we do remodeling, we do from roofing to the bottom of basements, we do everything for integrity and trust. And, uh, and we, have, we also have other businesses, KAD property management, I have my own roots landscaping business, my brother does power watch. We always are constantly busy. So him saying that, just know, we already know he's a prophet, but it's just like, a little bit of more like an emphasis on it, like, hey, I know what's going on, I see it. And then him saying that, 
that was, that was just amazing for, for my whole family, my mom being a prayer warrior as she is and being able to, that's the reason why we are the way we are, her and my dad, because they, ever since we were kids, babies, they always prayed, they never forced it on us. Even, even when going to church, even with being around people and going to events, we built our own relationship with Jesus and being able to do what we do now is because of what they poured into us at a younger age for all of our siblings and even my girlfriend's family, them being so loving and, and felt, uh, like welcoming me in for the last couple years. So it's, mm -hmm. it's amazing. I just love seeing it. So today he told me, he said my last name, which my last name is Abdullah, and it's a Muslim name. And it's funny because when I was at the airport coming here, a man had looked at my name and he was like, what's your name come from? Like he just asked me a question. I was like, oh, it's, it's a Muslim name. And then, but we're Christian, we're not Muslim. So I always knew since growing up, my last name is a Muslim name. It's not a Christian name because my, grand, my grandparents, uh, rest in peace, my grandfather, but he changed our last name to Abdullah from Brown. And that's when uh, that name started uh, decades ago. And then ever since then, it's been in our family, that Abdullah name. And so he told me today that my name wouldn't be able to go for what God has called me for since love he put his spirit into me. And God, uh, uh, by the will of God, he told me that I need to change my last name from Abdullah to Joshua. And he said it wouldn't work. He said, this he said some names can be redeemable, but he said this name, he said it, can, it has to go. So I, when I get home, Gotta, gotta change it to Joshua, so, and then start, you know, a legacy from there. So it's, it fits well, but what's actually funny too with that, me and my brother, he's not here right now, his name is KJ, and we were making a movie script, because we, we have a lot of talent, so we just like doing stuff at work. And two of the names that we had for the main characters were Joshua and the other brother, his name is Samuel. And my full name is Elijah Samuel Abdullah. So it was Elijah, Sam now it's Elijah Samuel Joshua. So it's just, wow. that's, that's just, and that was a, like almost a week ago we were making that script and coming here, him saying Joshua, I came up with the movie names. I was like, yeah, what's your name? I'm Joshua. So Holy Spirit just, is. God was already speaking to you. He, he moved, yeah, he yeah, moved me yeah. Just trust the Lord. Cause even me, like as I'm developing in all that God's calling me to do and speaking to me in my dreams and having that doubt always sitting there and talking in your ear. But you know, God, he always carry, carries it through and his word is truth. So just trust the Lord and do what he said cause it'll always come together. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I'm gonna say quotes that my parents gave me, one from my mom and one from my dad. My mom always says, don't second guess the Holy Spirit. Just Go, go with the flow and then also too, if you're gonna do it and you're scared to do something, do it scared. Mm -hmm. And then my dad always says like, cause we like to, me and my brother like to evangelize and be able to spread the gospel and spread the good news. And he always tells me, make sure you're not throwing your pearls to swine. Yeah. He always says that, so that's stuck in my head. So that's. And if it's the Lord's will, I learned, he will always provide a way. He will never make you do it in your own strength or in your own might. He will make the way straight. Mm -hmm. Amen. So to Prophet Logie, what would you say to him after everything that happened today? You know. Just thank you for everything that you're doing with Jesus, with God, the power that he's given you and having the strength that God gave you to continue pressing forward because we know it's not easy. I'm sure it's not easy in everything that he is doing, but thank you for listening to God and empowering us and inspiring us. Thank you and love you. I just want to say I love you, Prophet Love, and I knew I was going to meet you. I knew I was going. <laughs> I already knew it was going to happen, and so I just thank you for everything that you're doing. I thank you for your testimony. We know a lot about you, and we do a lot of research and whatnot, and, and studying you over the years. Mm -hmm. And you're just a blessing to our family, a blessing to our friends, and any relationships. All of your teachings, we try to, we try to. Um, just absorb them and be able to walk with them and not be, play the hypocrite as much as possible, but just do what we can do, do our mm -hmm. part. And I'm just glad to be here at your church, all these things that you started. And one day, as you said, I'm gonna to try to walk in your shoes. So, yes. God is, he's amazing. Like, he is amazing. I tell him every day I'm grateful 
I'm grateful for everything that he's put me through, the trials and tribulations, everything that he's had, that he's had me go through is for a reason. And it's for as I get older, when I'm even talking to my little cousins and telling them like, try to, you don't have to go through it. If you can learn from somebody that's been through it, mm -hmm. you can avoid it. And that's just powerful and I just love being able to be an outlet to as many people as I can and just try to stay as righteous as possible to be able to get, get my word across for, for as many people for God's will. So, and yeah. I just, I just love him. I just thank him for everything that he's done. Yeah. We just thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness and for your mercy and for your grace and just being our provider and our protector and allowing us to be here and speaking to us. We just, I love you, Lord. He's just so amazing. <laughs> yeah. I'm 30 years old and I'm based in Los Angeles, California. Hello, my name is Regina James and I live in Encino, California. And someone said that I can even tell my age. Well, I always tell people I'm a little bit too old for rock and roll and too young for a rocking chair. My name's Walter, I'm 31 years old. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri, but I live in LA. My name is Anisha. I am 28 years old, and I live in Marina Del Rey, California. It was a prophetic service. It was Thursday, and I started manifesting, and Papa Love pulled me out and delivered me from the spirit of suicide, from the spirit of death. There was a spirit that was telling me to take my life, and it was very much accurate to what I had been going through, saying, doing, and was getting ready to, to do. Uh, the main thing I got healed from was the effects of a 12-year disability that I had been praying to overcome. The night that I got my healing, I was sitting outside in the long lines that we have to be in in order to see the Jesus that Prophet Lovey serves. I just been asking the Lord, Please, when are we going to complete the healing? So the spinal stenosis and osteoarthritis that I was deemed permanently disabled with is what was healed that night. I could barely walk. I could barely stand up to cook an egg at my stove. And I was at the point where I was walking, bend, bending over. I could barely straighten up. But I've been walking straight ever since. And I've actually returned to work part-time. So I was healed from a, a facet disease. It's a, a regenerative disease in the spine where the cartilage um, uh, deteriorates over time. Really started to experience it a lot after I retired from the NFL. So I played in the NFL for four years. And that was uh, one of the reasons why I retired from the NFL was because of um, my fastest disease in my spine. Yeah, definitely was thankful to be healed from that. So I was healed from... God bless you all in the name of Jesus. I am so grateful to be here with you after some time of not being able to travel and after some time of lots of traveling. <laughs> uh, oh, dang, I'm sorry. See, that's how you know I've not been home for a while. <laughs> it's been some time. I've been traveling a lot, doing the work of God, and uh, um, it's, been, um, it's been good because, you know, when God sends us on assignments, it's necessary. Uh, but um, I'm, I'm glad to be home, and I'm hoping that I won't go anywhere for some time so that I can be back to doing this uh, revealed. I think I'm going to be doing them at least five times a week now. Because... Um, It, it, it's always um, my great pleasure to be able to like teach, especially like on these sit downs. I I can instruct you on things that I believe that um, are, are much more uh, um, not really. You know, there are some messages you you can't really teach in church because of the setting. This is more of a classroom kind of vibe. 
and it's a sit down, you know, and uh, anyone who knows me, I love to teach all the time. When I was in Paris, um, I spent like maybe eight hours with these men and women of God, sons and daughters, brothers and sisters that came to see me, teaching them consistently. So I'm going to be coming on a little earlier so that I can have my evenings to do other things. But uh, I'm hoping that um, by God's grace, I'll be able to empower you and, and uh, really build you into what God wants you um, to be. So um, share this as many times as you can. Let's get as many thumbs up as we can. And I'm going to be speaking about something extremely profound. And I am praying by the, God, by, by, by the Lord's grace, by God's grace, I don't go off the rails where I have to delete. I'm hoping it won't go that direction, but I want you to be empowered and I want to teach you about the ministry of grace. I want you to understand why the Bible says that um, let him that prophesieth or let him that ministers let them minister according to the grace. According to the grace given unto them. Meaning, whatever God has given you can never function beyond the grace made available by God. Now, understanding the ministry of grace means that whatever God gives you, you are able to maximize it. Now, I have discovered that a lot of people don't understand what it means to walk with God and how it means to be effective for God. I'm going to uh, uh, show you the difference and then I'll take you deep into scripture and to show you one of the most butchered scriptures, especially in the modern day church. Because the issue is, if you do not understand the meaning of the words being spoken or the word being read, you become a barbarian to the one you're communicating with. with. And this is in 1 Corinthians 14, it speaks about uh, uh, when you cannot understand each other. Many of us are trying to interact with God in a manner that God did not ordain it. So when we are dealing with God, God is like, what are you even trying to do? And if you don't understand something, God can never allow you to function in it because you become dangerous. So you will always be in the confines of what God has ordained. Now, with every gift that God has given, and everybody is gifted differently, but there are people who seem to have an ease of functionality with what the Lord has given. An example is, Every believer who has the Holy Spirit can prophesy, meaning they can speak of the oracles of God. But not everyone can prophesy forensically. An example, when I was in Paris, and uh, my son Lee went with me, I went with uh, Todd, I went with Andrew, and I went with uh, my son James. We were all a big family we want. And because of how much people pulled on me, I didn't even have time to pray to go to service now. Do I need to go and pray for me to go to service? No. Do I pray all the time? Yes. But do I need to pray to go and serve God? No, because I am in a rested place. I am not the one who's going to heal them. I'm not the one who's going to deliver them. I'm just an instrument. My prayer doesn't make God move more or move less. That's ignorance. God does what he wants because he has decided to. You know, sometimes we misplace prayer. And I'm going to talk about this a little bit more as we keep moving now. Hear me and hear me well. I was so tired. I said, all right, I had like about an hour before they come and get me to go to service. So I was like, all right, uh, I'm going to meditate for 30 minutes. Lay down, passed out, <laughs> sleep. Because I hadn't slept. 10 hour flight, I didn't sleep. You know. Um, as I'm there, sleep. Before I woke up, woke up, I fell into what is called the vision of the night. Because my body was so tired, I couldn't have an open vision from God. So he gave me a vision of the night, meaning that a closed vision. When I am asleep, within my sleep, God visits me and he speaks to me. So the angel of the Lord comes to me and he shows me a bunch of people in service that I was going to minister to. 
So when I came out of it, I could, didn't have enough time to write. But the man of God who invited me, he saw me writing some things. He was like, what are you writing? I said, oh, what God showed me. So I was like, okay. When I got there, and I did what God gave me to do. And I started speaking things that he saw me writing down. He was in so much shock because how is it that even in your dream, God can tell you when I'm not even trying. The reason is it is the measure of grace. Now, for every gift that God has given you, there is the gift part and there is the grace part. If you look at the Old Testament, people did things in order to be in right standing with God, but it was never enough. But when the Lord Jesus came and died for us and rose again, what does the Bible say? You are saved by faith through what? Grace. So even salvation is a product of grace. That's why the Bible calls it the gift of grace. It's a gift. Now, the reason why I am able to stand in Houston and pray a regular prayer. You see, there are people who do deliverance and they have to take you through a process. Nothing wrong with that. It's perfectly, uh, according to uh, doctrinal, it's perfect. Get you through a process where you confess stuff and you do this and then they pray, perhaps something breaks. Nothing wrong with that. It's perfectly fine. But if you understand grace, you go somewhere whereby there's a million people. You can't take them all through a process. You can only pray. So if your grace is limited to taking people through a process, and this is a one-time thing where you can gather all these people, they can only hear you in this time, then your effectiveness drops big time because without a process, you can't set them free. And deliverance is not a gift. It is the ministry of mercy. God being merciful to you to deliver you, whether you follow him or not, he delivers you so that you decide to follow him if you want to. But he doesn't deliver you on the condition that you have to follow him. No. God doesn't heal you so that you follow him. God, he heals you because he never created you to be sick. Now, if you are intelligent and smart, you will know that I was out of Christ and I was dying. The only way I can keep my healing is by being with him. So your whole concept and your whole approach transforms. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. So understand this by the Spirit of God, let this enter your soul. Grace is what makes what God gave you as a gift become an expression not of a gift but an expression of God himself. Because there is an expression of a gift which is still an expression of God's ability in a man. But then there is an expression of God. When Moses parted the Red Sea, it was not a gift. It was by the nostril of God that he divided the sea. This was no longer an act of a gift. It was an act of God. Because this was no longer the measure of anointing. This was no longer the measure of power. This was God showing that he's with a man. It's a different level altogether. The reason why they said Jesus is casting out demons by Beelzebub by the prince of demons. The reason why they came up with this doctrine is because even though they cast out demons, 
Remember, casting out demons wasn't a new thing. How do we know it? If you read, Jesus said, if I cast out demons by the power of Beelzebub, then whom do your sons cast out demons by? So you understand if you know Jewish tradition, you understand that they did practice exorcism. Yes, they did. How do we know it? You look in the book of, uh, of, of um, Samuel, you see that whenever an evil spirit oppressed Saul, David would play so that the demon would leave him alone. So deliverance existed. It's not a new thing. But the manner in which Jesus did it, they had to call it witchcraft. Because they had never, ever, ever seen anyone do it in that magnitude. Whereby there was no cleansing involved, there was no repentance involved, even the way Jesus healed people. When the Lord Jesus came to somebody, what did he say? He would look at you and say, your sins are forgiven. Rise up, pick up your bed and go. They'll be like, who do you think you are that you can forgive sin? This is an act of God. Duh, I am God. <laughs> Though when Jesus was ascending, he told his disciples the same thing. He said this, he said, go into all the world, cleanse the lepers, heal the sick, raise the dead. Whomsoever you forgive their sins, they will be forgiven in heaven. So you being able to forgive sin is an act of God. You are not God, but you are representing God that you can look at somebody that is so uh, oppressed by guilt, oppressed by condemnation, and you can look at them and say, your sins are forgiven. Haven't you seen me heal people like that? Yes. Where I look at somebody and say, your sins are forgiven. Follow Jesus, rise up and walk, and people get healed. And people are shocked. They're like, ah, this is demonic. No, they have never read scripture to understand that. There's a way you can position yourself. You see, in this generation, I should help you to seek God, but I should never let you struggle with sin. Because there is no more condemnation for those who are in Christ. So some people will tell you, oh, you need to repent. You need to do this to be delivered. Yes, it's true. But that's the Old Testament, not the New Testament. When, Paul, when Peter's shadow was healing people, was he asking them to, forg to repent? It was, a, it was grace and mercy. Now, today I'm going to teach you specifically. You see, people get offended. When I said this, I said, right now, to be honest with you, not just here, I'm going to tell you the truth. I know what the Lord told me. I know what the Lord has given me. Until my time is over, what God has given me, nobody else has. There are similarities, but there is only one of you, just like there's only one of me. Amen. You understand? And, and, and that is not pride. That's just truth. Listen, I can prophesy, but I will never prophesy like my father. It will be different. He will be unique in his own way and I will be unique in my own way. It's just a measure of grace. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? So I know the measure of grace that I've been given and my grace is unique. I know what the Lord has given me. And I will be robbing you if I don't show you why I got to that place. You see, everything that God gives you is in levels, is in realms, and is in dimensions. They are not the same. We can all live in the same area, but one may be in the poor side and one may be on the wealthy side. But we are all in the same area. It doesn't mean we are the same. And unless you understand that, you can't be elevated by God. I want you to look at this. Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10 from verse 17 to 20. Luke 10, 17 to 20. Let's read it. Hear this. Luke chapter 10, mm -hmm. verse 17 to 20. Mm -hmm. And the 70 returned again with joy, mm -hmm. saying, Lord, 
Even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. You have to understand what they are saying here. Jesus, our Lord, sent them two by two and said, Go leave you wherever you go. They accept you. Leave your blessing. If they reject you, take your blessing. Wipe the dust off your feet. It will be worse for them. Then he was Sodom and Gomorrah and all that good stuff. So when they come back, Jesus didn't command them to cast out demons or anything. But when they came back, they look at the Lord. They said, Lord, <laughs> even demons are subject unto us. You have to understand what that statement says. If I come to you and I say, I also can prophesy, Papa Lo. What you just said is you and me are on the same level. They compared themselves. They said, even demons were subject unto us. Notice, even. That's a comparison term. If they said, can you believe demons actually obeyed us by your name? That means they were surprised. But they came and they said, Lord, even demons. <laughs> was subject unto us even just like you they are with us even though we used your name before I continue let's get the likes up we are going somewhere get your your likes up we, we have 3,500 people watching and more people are coming on. Let's get the likes up and share it as many times as you can because we are going somewhere. Amen. I will tell you why. The grace of God has not been added on what God has given you. So let's, let's uh, refresh. Let me see how many people we have. Uh, we are 3,500 until we get to about 2,500. I'm not continuing. I'll wait for you. If you have pushed the thumbs up and you have shared it, just type number one, then I know we are on track. I'm waiting. Mm. Mm -hmm. This will open your eyes. Glory be to God. Yeah, okay, we are 2,500 more. The reason why I'm doing this is because the more this video has thumbs up and all this good stuff, the more uh, other people will get their eyes on it and they will grow in Christ. Amen. The point is to mature in Christ. Don't be stingy. Okay, we are 3,600, but we have 2.2 likes. Let's get more likes up. Let's get the likes up. When we get to 2.5, I shall continue. 2.2 let's get the likes up and if you haven't subscribed make sure you subscribe make sure you subscribe and subscribe and subscribe so that more people can be blessed okay we have 200 more let's go 200 more 200 more 200 more 200 more 200 more 100 more hallelujah let's let's this is the this is the best thing you can do for this channel is to share. Amen. You're learning free of church. You're growing free of church. Amen. The least you can do is benefit somebody else, just like you're being benefited. There we go. We've made it. So now hear this. So they come to the king of glory and they tell him, demons were also subject to us, just like they are to you. Oh, yeah. In your name, though. Now, for you to know that they compared themselves, you need to see the response of the Lord. You have to ask yourself, why is the Lord answering this way? Now, read the next verse. Look at this. And he said unto them, uh -huh. I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Wait. So Jesus is saying, don't compare yourself with me. I kicked him out of heaven. Amen. 
Now, they were functioning in this ability not because they received prayer. By association, they were using the grace of the Lord unto themselves because they are casting out demons without the Holy Spirit at this stage. They are not baptized by the Holy Spirit. Do you know you can have the power of the Holy Spirit? You can have the Holy Spirit living in you. Yet you're powerless. Because everything you do will always be according to the measure of grace. That is why we all have the Holy Spirit, those who have given their life to Jesus Christ. But we all don't do the same thing. Why? The same one that is living in me is also living in you. Why is he answering me faster than you? Why is he answering you faster than the next one? It's because even though we have the same Lord, we don't have the same response time because the grace is different. When people say building a relationship with Jesus, no, that's actually a wrong term because that is a modern term. You can't build with God. I loved you first. You did not call me, I called you. You did not choose me, I chose you. Before you are even conceived, I already loved you. So you can't build with somebody that has unconditional love. It is you discovering him. Not him learning to trust you. He already knows about you and he decided to be with you. Amen. So you're not building with him. Amen. We are making God a human. God is not human. Amen. Oh, I'm just building a relationship with God. No. You are learning how to follow God, how to love God, not him loving you. There is no act that you will do that will make God love you more. No. Unconditional meaning there is no condition. So every condition you set is useless. That's what unconditional means. God means what he means. I remember one lady came to me a, a few years ago and I was... Uh, um, at one of my mentors' church when I was serving there years ago, Pastor Leslie Peters, who's like a father to me because his friend, uh, his son, his only son, Jesse, was my closest friend when I, when I moved here. Jesse is a brother to me. The reason why I'm using the name is and not was is because those who are in Christ are not dead. Their bodies are asleep, but their spirit are alive evermore. So he's, he's, not, he's not dead. But I was close to him. Even unto his time leaving, he was calling for me. You know, that was, uh, that was a very difficult time. But um, in his church, there's a lady that came to me. Said, oh, I know why God is using you this way. Because of how you, you just have given yourself to him. You said, yes. Said, woman. Don't credit me and kill me before my time. There is a time I will teach you about the difference between the elect and the called. You see, when you are called, you have an option. When you are elected, you have no option. You are created to serve him. You can't escape. When God came to Moses, he didn't ask Moses, can you go to Egypt, please? He said, I am sending you. When he came to Jeremiah, he said, before you are born, I ordained you, go. So if you're elected, you don't say yes. You have no choice. That is why Jonah said, where can I run from your presence? You, if you're called, you can run. If you're elected, you can't. There is no escape. None. That's why I don't say, oh, when I discovered I have a call. No, I am elected. Before I was even, before the foundations of the world, he picked me already. He ordained me a prophet. I did not discover I was a prophet. I was a prophet before I even knew I was a prophet. Yes. At six years old, he revealed it to me, 1992. <laughs> are, you getting to, are you getting it? Yes. So it's not like, oh, I became a prophet. No, I don't need anyone to prophesy me. I, I am a prophet. Yes. That's the difference. That's why the Bible says it like this. In the last days, there will be so much deception. If it were possible, even the very elect. 
Even the very elect would be deceived. You have to understand what that term means. Everyone else can be deceived, not the elect. Amen. That's why you need to know who is elected by grace. You need to know. Because the elect can't be deceived. I, you don't, I don't even need to hear you preach. I don't even need to hear you pray. I will look at you and I will know who you are. That's what being elected means. An elect is different. That's why the Bible says, and the God of the spirits of the prophets. Not why, no, why didn't he say the spirits of humans? Why is he saying the spirits of the prophets? Read it in Revelation, I believe, 22. And the God of the spirits of the prophets. <laughs> why the God of the spirits of the prophets? There's a difference. But that's not what we're going to talk about. We'll speak about it another time. And the election is not because you did anything. It's by grace. I didn't choose to be a prophet. I didn't fast to be a prophet. I didn't do any of that. So capture this as the Lord is helping us by His Spirit. It didn't say even the elect can be deceived. It said if it were possible. Meaning it is impossible. If it were possible, even the very elect would be deceived. Meaning it is not possible. If it were. Meaning it is impossible. So hear me. Hear me by the Spirit of God. So Jesus is showing a distinction between him and them. Say, guys, I saw him falling like lightning. We are not the same. I, 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 I shushed him out of heaven. I saw him falling. Then keep reading. Listen to what he says. <clears throat> Verse 19. Mm -hmm. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions mm -hmm. and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notice Jesus now is saying, what you're doing is because I have given you power. I have given you power. I have given you power. To do all these things and it will not harm you. This is not because of you, because of what I have given you. But keep reading. Verse 20. Mm. Now we're standing in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Now notice what Jesus said. Jesus said this. He said, don't rejoice because these spirits have obeyed you. Rejoice. Because your names are recorded in heaven. Now, this is not the book of life. This is the book of the elect. <laughs> Saying you're doing this because you have been chosen. Not because of you. Your names have been recorded in heaven. Now, if you read... Uh, um, I read this yesterday in, in church and it says, and, and to the, to, uh, ye, for ye have come unto my, Mount Zion and to the sea, city of God with innumerable number of angels. It goes on to even say, and to the firstborns and to the church of the firstborns who their names are written in heaven. Notice everyone else's name wasn't recorded, written. He was only talking unto the firstborns and to the church of the firstborns who their names have been written. Because these men are unique because their election was not when Jesus came. Their election was from the foundation of the earth. Yeah, please read it, read it so that 
I'm not just paraphrasing. Read it for me. Hebrews chapter 12 from verse 22. Uh -huh. But ye are come unto Mount Zion, and unto the city of the living God, mm. the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels. Yes. To the general assembly and church of the firstborn, mm -hmm. which are written in heaven. Notice, the church of the firstborn. Notice, everyone else is in heaven. It even goes on to say, and to the spirits of just men, made perfect. But there, you don't hear them being recorded. But these guys are special. They have been recorded. Mm. Deep, deep, deep. deep. One day we'll talk about the book of the elect. <laughs> there are so many books in heaven. This is why, I, let me just tell you something I observed with my walk with God. When you get caught up with God a lot, you start realizing that there are men that chose themselves, God didn't choose them. There are people preaching Jesus on earth, which is not bad. But they are preaching him in the wrong place. Some people are in churches. <laughs> Let me fix my mic. Hey, hey. Let me fix it so that it's, it's perfect. Uncle Chris, you want to? Okay, no, it's good now. It's good. <laughs> Let me say it. Let me see that. Listen to me and listen to me by the Spirit of God. There are so many illegal representatives of Christ. Amen. Now, yes, the Bible says we should all preach. But it did not say everyone should be a pastor. Amen. It did not say everyone is a prophet. Amen. It did not say everyone is an evangelist. The Bible never said that. It said we should all preach. Yes, we should. You know, many say, oh, the power of God is not in the church because the church is not praying. No, it can be your pastor is not called. Because his name is not recorded, he has not also been accorded grace to carry out certain things. So they are trying to do things that is not in their jurisdiction. So instead of them being a blessing to the church, they become a creator of confusion. Then they start creating doctrines like, you don't need healing. You don't need to speak in tongues. This healing stuff ended with a certain group of people. It is for the Old Testament, not for the New Testament. They start creating these doctrines to fit themselves into a picture they were never invited. They start to talk about things and to speak about things and to teach things that is not for them. Simply because they planted themselves where they were not invited. That is why the Lord Jesus said this. He says, your high priests sit in the seat of Moses, but they don't do what Moses did. So even though they are saying good things, don't do what they do. So it was easier for them to call Jesus a wizard because they did not carry the same power because they were not recorded. Some were chosen, but they were never elected. Because when you're called, out of the called, God chooses. But the elect have no choice. Listen to me. An elected person was designed for that work. Elected people are so consumed by the mandate of God, they don't have time to look at what others are doing. Mm. Even though they can see, even though they can, they know. I, it's just like, I have no time to watch anyone. For what? What God has given me so much. 
and the life of man is like a vapor. So I want to do as much as I can do before I go. Before I'm called, I want to get as much done because life is like a vapor. Tomorrow is not promised. Are, are, you, are you listening? Yes. So, so, so hear me. Many have qualified themselves where they were not qualified. And the issue is those ones that have qualified themselves go to the elect also and make themselves equals. And because they make themselves equals, the elect cannot pour what God has given into them and to others. You see, for everything spiritual, there is a legal way to go about it and then there is the grace way. I don't deliver people by legal means. Mm -hmm. I minister it by grace. Amen. When we went to Houston, I, listen to me, children of God. Ah, uh, hmm. I can prophesy at any time. At any time. It's a grace God gave me. Mm -hmm. I don't just have the gifting. I have the grace for it. If I want to see, I'm seeing. Whatever God has given me, I've yielded to the realm of grace. When I went to Paris, a lot of people came to see me. There were 5,000 people that came. Mm -hmm. But when I was there, there was a few men of God that wanted to know the measure of my gifting. One good prophet, a friend of mine, I just wanted him to believe, to know that this is not a movie. told him, Prof, you see that woman over there? In 1998. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Bishop. Yeah, I'm live. We'll, we'll work tomorrow. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm live, Bishop. So everyone, if the power shot is messed up, it's not me, it's him. Bishop Aki. <laughs> so when I'm done, I'll call you Bishop. Okay, okay. So, I told him. <laughs> I told him, Bishop, I, I said Bishop. I said, Prophet, see the woman behind you, that one, sitting with this upper She said, yeah, he said, yeah. I said, in 1998, this woman had surgery. They cut open her stomach because her, is it called spleen? What is it? Had exploded. So she had internal bleeding and it was an emergency. They had to open her up. And uh, right now she has a big old scar on her stomach. But not only that. <laughs> In 2006, she had a stroke. Her whole left side, her whole right, was it left, right, I can't remember now. Left or right side is messed up and she, on top of that. In 2008, she developed arthritis. Go tell her in her ear and say what she will say. So the prophet went behind and spoke to her. He was shocked. He looked at me. I said, prophet, that is prophetic. That's now prophecy. Not word of knowledge. Word of knowledge is insight. Prophecy is in motion. I have your past, not in fragments. I am choosing what to see. Because I, that is why I prophesy the way I prophesy. I want to go into your problem. I want to deal with your problem. I don't want to give you information. I will go into your issue so that you know that I know it. And then after that, I will take it and turn it around by the Spirit of God and tell you also what will happen. The man of God was shocked. He said, how did you do that? I said, I'm a prophet. <laughs> I said, 
I will show you power today. You see power. You know the power of his might. You see it. So I taught for like 20 minutes, probably the shortest message I've ever preached. Because I had to go to the airport by five and actually I was delayed. I almost missed my flight. But I did everything I could to make sure I'm here. After I taught, I prophesied like three people or so. And even to go even deeper, the dreams that I had written down, names, the children, what happened, everything was there. They were shocked because I showed it to them. No things you can Google or look in Facebook. You won't find it. Even groups of people came together. I said, I called you. Oh, that's your name. Oh, it's you. Okay. Where are your two friends that you came with? Ah, shocked. <laughs> <laughs> then after I did all this, I said, okay, I will show you how the power of God works. I told the ashes, be ready because I know what you're about to see. You have not seen it. Maybe you've heard of it, but you have not experienced it. I just lifted my finger and I did this. Ha. Huh? <laughs> some pastors, some evangelists, some regular people were all, it was like the walking dead. And they were all delivered. Amen. Now, what makes it so easy is the understanding of what I'm about to tell you. So the disciples compared themselves. That Jesus said, listen, you be happy because you are chosen. You are doing this not because of you. Grace has been extended to you. Amen. Now, Matthew 17 from verse 19. <laughs> this is the most dismantled verse for those who want to walk in the power of God, no matter what area, but I'm speaking specifically on deliverance. I've been delivering people since I was six, seven. Anywhere I prayed, the same thing you see now just happens. Not because I, I deserve or I'm this great person. No, I know the grace in me, it's huge. I know no one can do this at this time. But the ones who come after, they will do it, you will do it way more. Way more than I would do it. Because whatever God reveals to you is your beginning. So, so it is a starting point. Can you go down? Let me let me let me school somebody real quick. Go down. Go go down, go down. Okay. Stop right there. Okay, keep going. Okay. Somebody called D Dylan How do you say that last name? He says, "Do not call anyone on earth father, for no one is your father except who is in heaven." So, read on me this, Batman. Why does God say I'm the God of your father? If you can answer that, then we can have this discussion. If you can't answer that, sit down. Why does God introduce himself saying, I am the God of your fathers? Why did Jesus himself, who made that statement, say, you call Abraham your father, but you're not his children. If you're really his children, then you would know me. So why does God say, I am the God of your fathers, when he appeared to Moses, when throughout the scriptures... Even in Acts, the apostles talk about the same thing. Mm -hmm. So if you can answer that, then we can have this discussion. If you can't answer that, then you don't, you have, you see, an example is this. I was talking to my grandfather yesterday. My grandfather in the Lord, I was talking to Bishop. Mm -hmm. I was talking to Bishop Noel Jones yesterday. We spent a lot of time together. And uh, as I was spending time with my old man, 
I was speaking to him and he said, you see, what they do to your videos, I went with you. And I saw it with my own eyes, what God can do. And anyone who says that it's not God with you is a rapper bait. Because no man can do these things unless God is with them. Yeah. But then he goes on to say this. He says, you see the clips they cut about you. Yes, what you said is true. But they cut it out of context. Because if you don't add the context, then what you said appears wrong. But what you said is true. But any scripture cut out of context will appear bad unless you put it in its context. So he went on to say this. So he went on to say this. So he says, Abraham is, isn't our father, even though we are obviously... That, do you see how foolish that is? This is, the, this is the evidence. How can you be somebody's seed, but he's not your father? The Bible says... Your descendants. L listen, listen to this. The Lord is saying to Abraham, he's saying, your descendants, your children, ye, you are children of Abraham. But somebody, you see how ignorance uh, messes people. This is the perfect example. Perfect example. Okay, say so because we are born of God. Let me give you another one. I'm just entertaining this to show you how igno ignorance looks like. God came to Abraham and he said to Abraham, Abraham, give me your son. He said, give me my son Israel. Is Israel the son of Jacob or is he the son of God? Why is Jesus called the son of David? Yet Jesus is God in the flesh. <laughs> Remember, they asked Jesus the same question. Jesus said, then explain to me this scripture. Why does it say, and the Lord said to my Lord, sit until I make all your enemies your footstool. So if the Lord is saying to his Lord, so who is greater? <laughs> Don't you know the Bible says you are grafted into the house of Israel. No, why not into the house of God? Because men don't understand salvation was given to Abraham. Unless you are his child, you're not going to heaven. Jesus is the seed of Abraham and is the firstborn of many. They don't even know what to be born again means. Classic example of ignorance. He says, we are the seed of Abraham, but not his children. So they don't even know what the word seed means. If you read it in Greek, it literally says spammer, sperm. Go read your Bible. You don't want to play Bible. I will embarrass you. Let's keep going. Now listen to this. Listen to this by the Spirit of God. So, so now watch this. Watch this and understand this. Watch this and understand this by the Spirit of God. Functionality is by grace. The expansion of what God has given you is by grace. <laughs> he said, I can't embarrass you. Go look at yourself in the mirror and say this. We are the seed of Abraham, but we are not his children. <laughs> Yet God told him, <laughs> you will be the father of many nations, not the father of Isaac. Go look at yourself in the mirror and say that, yes. It says, call no man on earth father. Does he have a dad? Thank you. <laughs> Musa, that, that, was, uh, that was a low blow. <laughs> it's okay. Let's leave him. He's a, he's a, he's a child. He's a child. Now, now, let's continue. Watch this now. Now, are you, are you at uh, Matthew 17, 19? Yeah. Read this. Listen to this. Listen to this. Matthew 17 and 19. Yes. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart. Then the disciples of Jesus came to him apart because they had an incident and they could not solve. So they went to him. Okay, what did he say to them? And what did they say? Mm -hmm. And said, why could not we cast him out? Wait, they just came. Jesus said, I have given you power. Mm. But now they come to Jesus and say, Lord, why couldn't we cast this demon out? 
Why couldn't we cast him out? Why couldn't we cast him out? Why? Why is it you face certain things you can't do yet? They, they said even demons were subject unto us. Then they meet a demon that was not. Now, what people say is one demon is more powerful than other. No. If Jesus is God indeed, then every demon is subject to him. It shouldn't matter whether it is the devil himself or a little devil. It should not matter. Because God is above all. So they were confused within themselves. They say, ah, why couldn't we cast this demon out? Listen to this, keep going. And Jesus said unto them, Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief. Wait, stop right there. No. What is unbelief? He did not say because of your lack of faith. So you need to ask yourself, what is unbelief? Okay, look at how, okay, let me just add one more. Look, look at this. And then after this, after this block, listen to what he says. He says, Timothy was Paul's son in the faith. So, but Timothy didn't call Paul his father. Look at how he's just. <laughs> Yo, ignorance is deep. He, 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 he. Listen, hey, bro, stop, stop posting. You're making yourself look. I don't even need to respond to you. You're looking, you're looking really shady right now. If Paul is looking at, at Timothy and saying, Timothy, my son, I have begotten you. Not you have been gotten, begotten by God. I have begotten you in the faith. The point is, if Paul can call him my son. It's, it's crazy. Just block them. They, they, it's, it's, I'm actually saving him from embarrassment. This is the perfect example of trying to teach what you are not sent to. Classic. Just put them away. Maybe on time out. Yeah, it's embarrassing now. Hey, I may God give you the spirit of wisdom and understanding because you clearly have read the right scriptures, but your brain... That's called reading yourself instead of read, allowing the text to speak to you. No ability. Even if you're not spiritual, just the ability to exegete scripture. It will tell you you're off. Yeah. You don't need the Holy Spirit for that one. Have you ever noticed no scholar in the world argues these things except Christians? And it's Christians who have no ability to teach. Isn't that crazy? People who have never led anyone are the ones that teach this thing. Unqualified. You will never meet any of the scholars, biblical scholars, who are even trying to criticize the Bible. They will never, ever, ever, ever say these things because it's obvious. Hey, fire. Anyhow, so they said, Lord, why couldn't we? Go into the next verse. Look at this. And Jesus said unto them, mm -hmm. because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove. Now you have to understand, unbelief and faith are two different things. Okay. Or belief and faith are two different things. Belief is understanding God's ability. Faith is operating in that ability. This is the difference between believing and faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Meaning if I have faith, I have that thing. Believing is understanding the power of his might. That's why somebody has to convince, convince you to believe. So you have to convince somebody. That's where belief comes in. 
If I know your character so well and you do something, somebody comes and tells me, oh, you did that. I'll be like, nah, I don't believe it. I know Lamy. I know Dre. Ah, they would not do that. Are you sure? My belief is my confidence in their ability, not my faith in their ability. So you cannot have faith without belief because belief is understanding the power of God's might. Understanding that heaven and earth was created by him, by his word he sustains them. He is capable to do anything and everything. That is belief, that is not faith. Faith is different. So Jesus said you don't know, you, you have unbelief. You don't know the power of his might, meaning that they believed in what they could do, not in God's capacity. That is why they said, why couldn't we? Yes, yes, yes. They were talking about their ability. Why couldn't we? Cast out the demon. Demons are subject unto us. So they received something from God, but instead of relying with, to God, they began to rely on their own ability. They began to lean on their own understanding. So when they hit a road bump, they said, why couldn't we? They didn't ask, Lord, how did you do it? They questioned what was in them because he could not bear results. So Jesus pointed their unbelief. Because belief is in something. Faith is not belief because faith is I have it. Let's go a little deeper. Let's go a little deeper. Ah, we are at 5,000 people. Let's get the thumbs up to, to four. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please subscribe. Share this as many times as you can. I want you to hit the like buttons. And if you hit the like button, type number one so that we know that you liked it. Uh, so that we can get more people to watch this video. Amen. So uh, push the likes up as many times as you can. Let's get it to 4,000. We have 500 more to go. Let's get as many, many thumbs up as possible so that more people can benefit from this. We want more people to watch the video. We want the algorithm to work so that if more people like it, then it will suggest it to more people. So we want people to see this. So click it as many times as you can. 37, okay, we have uh, 300 more. Let's get it, let's get it. Mm. 38, 200 more to go. Mm. Shabba ranks. Shabba. <laughs> we are almost there. Almost there, 200 more. Let's get the likes up. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. We are, my goal is before the year ends, let's go over a million. We did it with TikTok. Amen. Let's do it also uh, with uh, YouTube. We are already at, uh, oh wow, 260. In a little bit, we'll be 260. We have a thousand to go, right? Yeah, 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 God is good. Amen. Let's win the world for, for our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, we're at 4,000. Now read the next verse that everyone butchers. Musa, can you read this for me? Yes, sir. Ah. Hear this, because this one is now the important one. This is where a lot of deliverance people have made a mistake. Too much mistake. Too, too, too many mistakes because of this verse. If you learn this, I'm telling you, the way Jesus will use you will surprise you. Amen. Read it, uh, read it, uh, Musa. Verse 21. Mm -hmm. How be it, this kind goeth out 
goeth not out by prayer and fasting. Jesus now says, this kind that you have faced, he said, number one, you have unbelief, meaning you don't know the power of his might. And then he goes on to say, but nevertheless, this kind, notice to Jesus, he wasn't this kind. He was no different than any other spirit he encountered. Keep that in mind. To the Lord Jesus, he was the same. But for them, said this kind does not come unless by what? Prayer, Prayer and fasting. Now, a lot of people when they want deliverance or they want more anointing or they want more power from God, they fast. I'm sorry to bust your bubbles. <laughs> That's not what fasting is for. If you don't know what fasting and prayer is, you will not understand what Jesus said. You would not. Of course the disciples prayed. Why is Jesus saying fasting and prayer? Why is the Lord emphasizing this thing? In order for you to understand, Daniel chapter 9 verse 3. Actually, no. Ezra chapter 8 verse 21. Ezra 8 21. Then I proclaimed the fast there at the river of Hava that we might afflict ourselves before our God to seek of him a right way for us and for our little ones and for all our substance. For I was ashamed to require of the king a band of soldiers and horsemen to help us against the enemy in the way. Notice this. The word afflict there is not to harm, but to lower yourself. We humbled ourselves. I told them, I declared a fast. I said, guys, we need to humble ourselves before God. <laughs> because this battle we are facing, ah, we can't do it. Daniel 9.3. Daniel 9.3. Daniel 9, 3. chapter 9, verse mm -hmm. 3. Uh -huh. And I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplications with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confession and said, O Lord, the great and dreadful Notice, God. Notice, whenever people were fasting, they took off their nicest clothes and put on what sackcloths. They humbled themselves. The primary function of fasting is humility. Because you have realized that, listen, on my own, I can't. Joel 2.12. Joel 2.12. Joel 2.12. Mm -hmm. Therefore also now, saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart, and with fasting, and weeping, and with mourning, and rend your heart, and not your garments, and turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful. Notice, fasting has always been, God is saying, come back with me with humility because the lowest you can ever bring yourself is when you fast. Amen. Anyone who says, I am a humble person, but they don't fast before God, they are not humble. One more scripture, Psalms 35 verse 12. Hmm. Psalm 35, mm. 
and verse 12. Mm -hmm. They rewarded me good. They rewarded me evil for good to the spoiling of my soul. Mm -hmm. But as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. I humbled my soul with fasting. And my retain so, so so understand this. Humbling has always uh, fasting has always been one thing, humbling yourself. It's to lower yourself. For every spiritual act, because fasting is not about breaking a character or an attitude in the flesh. Fasting is not even starving yourself. Fasting is an act of humility of your soul. You are wearing sad clothes and all these things. That's why he said, I don't want you to humble yourself with your clothing. I want your soul. Turn to me with weeping. Let it come from inside of you. Because true humility to God is the soul realizing its need for God and that on its own it cannot do anything. And you do this to the flesh to break the flesh. Because if you have ever fasted, you notice you become meek, you become quiet, you come down. But the moment you eat, you become loud again, you become all these things. The flesh thinks it can do everything by itself. You no longer rely on the inward man, you start relying on the outward man. Because when you eat, you are strong. When you don't eat, you are weak. I humbled my soul in fasting. Fasting is an act of humility. It is not where God gives you power. When the Lord Jesus went into the wilderness, my screen is off. When the Lord Jesus went into the wilderness, he went into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil, not to be tested. But if you look at every resistance of the Lord to the enemy was based on reliance on God and not on self. That is why the first thing that the devil offered him was food. Because if he ate, the humility would disappear. He went to his stomach first. Then Jesus, to affirm his humility, said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. My life is not because I have bread. What God says is what keeps me alive. Meaning that I am in this position to receive more life. Even though the outward man is perishing, the inward man is strengthened. So, Everything that the devil threw at him was to see where does he draw strength from? Fasting proves where you're drawing your strength from. When you are cut off from the supplies of this world, shall you live or shall you die? If you pull from God, you don't die. If you pull from the world, your body will be alive, but your soul and your spirit will perish. My God. The spirit of man sustains him through his afflictions. The reason why many cannot persevere through trouble is because your outward man is strong but your inward man has no nutrients, has no reliance on God. So when you go through trouble, you give up. When you go through trouble, you quit. When you go through trouble, you don't pray anymore. You resent God because you have only learned to receive strength from physical things, but never from spiritual things. When you go through the valley of the shadow of death, there will be no brother. There will be no sister. There will be no friend. There will be no mother. There will be no father. Only the shepherd can give you comfort. So that physical comfort you are used to, by who you can call, who you can talk to, who you can do this with, no longer exists at that moment. 
the only thing that will sustain you, the only thing that will keep you, is the shepherd. That is why he did not say, as I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I see you. As I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, uh, I, I, I sense you. He says, no, I know. I know you are with me. Because you comfort me. Notice, he knew the shepherd was with him because of a comfort that came from deep within. Even though the physical body was afflicted, it was not pleasant. He knew tomorrow would be okay because there was a comfort beyond understanding. There was a peace beyond understanding. There was an assurance that was beyond understanding. Why? Because he learned to draw strength from Elohim, from El Shaddai, and not from man. Not from their job. Not because of a company. He understood how to draw strength from God himself. That is why David wrote that Psalms. The act of fasting is complete humility before God. That is why fasting by itself is not complete until there is prayer. Why did Jesus say fasting and prayer? Every time the Lord took them to the mountain to pray with him, they slept. They prayed when it was convenient. When it was inconvenient, they could not tarry in the presence of God. Come and watch and pray with me. Father, in the name of Jesus. You know my heart, Lord, you know. It means, now, now, now let me show you that their prayer was out of convenience. In Matthew chapter 6, the disciples came to Jesus. Now remember, when John doubted our precious Lord, he sent his disciples to ask him, are you the Christ or should we wait for another? Then Jesus said, Go and tell him, the blind can see, the deaf can hear, the dead are raised. Blessed is he that is not ashamed of me. The disciples saw Jesus praying, but they saw him praying in private, never in public. But the spirituality they were used to was displayed in public and never in secret. So when they came to Jesus and said, teach us how to pray like the disciples of John. Now you have to understand that the disciples of Jesus were not friends with the disciples of John. They just saw them. But every time they saw them, they were in the public squares by the river. Rabba shakada bahaya. They said, wow, these ninjas can pray. <laughs> Remember the disciples of John are the ones who came and said, why don't your people fast? So they were the standard of righteousness. <laughs> that even though the disciples were with the king of righteousness, they never admired how he prayed because the king of righteousness prayed in humility. When he prayed, he was in his knees. There was no exciting picture. 
There was no shouting and hollering. It was in total calm and humility. So when they came to Jesus, they admired, remember, the purpose of prayer is results, not show. The purpose of prayer is what? Results. Not show. And the results is, an, is a response from God. But this man were excited about the appearance of prayer, not the results of prayer. So they went to the ones the disciples of John prayed to. Who is God, Emmanuel, who is with them? They went to him and said, teach us how to pray like the disciples of John. Not teach us how to pray like you pray, but teach us how to pray like the disciples of John. What? Jesus was shocked by this question. Then Jesus started telling them what not to do. Why was he telling them not what, to, what not to do? Because he knew these were the reasons why they were asking to learn how to pray. Yet Jesus said, imitate me, take after me, for my yoke is lighter. Look at what I do and do it. But they were impressed by public show. They looked at him. Teach us with all boldness. Teach us how to pray. Like the disciples of John. John himself, they didn't even say, teach us to pray like John. They wanted the disciples. Because when John prayed, he went to the wilderness. When he came back is when they joined him. Repent. Because John in the wilderness, he was by himself. He was not with them. Hear me. What is prayer? Fasting is humility. Prayer is reliance. Fasting is humility before God. Prayer is reliance to God. Believing is confidence in God's ability, in his might and his power. Faith is having what his power has produced. That is why he said, this is not possible because of your unbelief. But if you believe, you have faith like a mustard seed that can move mountains. Notice, believing is always in his power. Knowing the capacity of God that is limitless. Faith is the results of that belief. That is why faith is substance. When you have faith, you don't wait for manifestation. Because faith is the evidence of the manifestation. Yeah. Now hear this, hear this. Hear this. Let this enter into your soul. Let this enter into your spirit. Let this elevate you. Let this cultivate you. Let it push you deeper into God. I'm going to read a verse to you. Actually, I'll give it to you to read it. 
James chapter 4, verse 5 to 6. James chapter 4, 5 to 6. Mm -hmm. Do ye think that the scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? Notice. He's saying, do you think the Bible says in vain that the spirit in you fights? contends with your flesh for nothing. It envies. You have to always remember, envy is always to the negative. If I envy something, it means it's not mine. If I'm jealous of something, it means it's mine and somebody else is trying to take it. That is why God says I am a jealous God. He doesn't say I'm an envious God. God is jealous of us because we are his creation. God has no envy in him because envy is always negative. But he says the spirit in you envies. It means the spirit in you, your human spirit wants you to give the same life you give to the flesh also to eat because you have denied it. Because your life, you have positioned it in the physical more than you have to your spirit. You have neglected it because of the fallen nature. But listen to verse 6. <laughs> verse 6. But he giveth more grace. He, does just, he doesn't just give grace. When you already have grace, you need what? More grace. He gives more grace to who? The, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. The ministry of grace does not happen to proud people. A proud person, you see, the gift of God is without repentance. I personally don't think deliverance is a gift. It's not a spiritual gift. It's not. Mark 16, 17, and this sign shall follow them that believe. It's obvious, duh, you belong to Jesus. Demons must be under you. But there is a realm that it is no longer just you wrestling with flesh and blood. Do you know what the word wrestling? I'll teach you about what the Bible says, wrestling. We don't wrestle. Remember, this is a Greek term, to wrestle. You don't fight demons, you wrestle demons. You can fight from a distance. It can be arrows, it can be spears. Wrestling means to tussle up and close and personal. To wrestle is I can, I, I can smell your sweat. Your sweat is rubbing on me. I am, that's what to wrestle means. We read that and we think it means, uh, it means fighting. It did not say we fight. It said we wrestle. Let me explode your mind for a second. No weapon formed against you shall what? Prosper. When the devil tries a weapon, he doesn't work. He wrestles you. You guys missed it. If you understood it, type number one, type number one, type number one. If you understood it, just type number one so that I know you got it.
Do you think the devil will quit because he tried to uh, uh, shoot an arrow and he didn't work? Mm. He's going to wrestle you. You'll get up close and personal. Mm. But Jesus never wrestled the demon. Do you know what he said? I cast him out by the finger. <laughs> by the finger of God. You don't wrestle God. That is why the Bible says it like this. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood. It did not say God. It said we. Talking about the human race. <laughs> we. It did not say I. It said we. But there are men and women that have gone out of the we. They have entered into the finger of God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> they just have to, whatsoever they bind on earth, is bound in heaven. It is no longer their battle. It's the Lord's. Amen. That is the definition of the battle is the Lord's and victory is ours. It means you no longer fight. You just represent him in a fight. Amen. Then his finger comes in and does bop. But this level, this dimension, this level is not given to people with pride. Pride has condemnation. Pride undermines. Pride judges. Pride has self-righteousness. Oh, that person doesn't do that. This person doesn't do this. This person doesn't do that. That person doesn't do that. So they are fake. Let me ask you a question. Who is perfect? So if you set a standard, are you God? For we have all fallen short of the glory of God. But you want to feel that you are the standard. Pride. Where sin abounds, abounds, grace abounds the more. It's not saying go and sin. That's not what the Bible is saying. The Bible is saying where you understand that you miss the mark, then you are candidate for the power of God to rest on you. When you think that your ability does it, God looks at you as a prideful person, then he will say, why do you need me? You are perfect. But is the perfection within yourself or is the perfection from God? You can be the most well-behaved human being. It doesn't mean you have power. Power is given. So if you are perfect on your own standard that you feel it's a form of godliness, I don't lie, I don't steal, I don't fornicate, I don't do this, that's cool. That doesn't mean that automatically power goes from God and comes to you. The transfer of power is always an act of humility. The greater shall bless the lesser. The woman with the issue of blood took power from Christ because she humbled herself. Crawled to the ground and said, I know it is only him that can heal me. I tried doctors, I tried this. If I can just touch him, I don't even need him to pray. Just touching him, I know I'll be made well. That is dependence reliance, humility, knowing that I'm not worthy to touch him. Touch Jesus. Jesus said, who took strength from me? Who took power from me? Who took a grace from me? You are. I've been born again, filled with the Holy Spirit since 1965. As you can see, I am a Christian. As you can see, I am a Christian. I get you know I've realized that this is an observation last night I was on the phone with Mama Ghana and I was telling about an incident that happened with a certain man of God that I helped big time I won't mention the person's name but I helped this person big time and this person did something that you should never do 
when God has extended somebody to help you and you try to take advantage of them. You see, I help people because of the goodness of God I've experienced and I do it from the bottom of my heart. Not because anyone's taking advantage of me, but I just love to bless people. But when you turn that and you try to be a thief, the supply cuts off. I am extremely generous. I have a generous spirit. I do. It didn't start when I got saved. It is something I've struggled with since I was a child. I just want to help people, even sometimes at my own expense. What I did for this man, if I told you, you'd be shocked. But the man started doing weird things and the Lord told me, don't give him anything anymore. His heart, I, I caused you to help him. To show him the way. But he's not listening to me. Cut your supply off. Don't help him anymore. Now God spoke. I stopped. The man searched me out. Came. All that gentleman. Old enough to be a father to me. Went to his knees, tried to beg me for forgiveness. I said, no, you don't need to do that. It's okay. He spoke to Mama Ghana, said, Mama Ghana, talk to him, and this and this. I don't know what I did. She told him, this is what you did. He said, ah, I'm sorry, I didn't know, I didn't know. Okay, okay. I told Mama, you shouldn't have even told him. God told me he's not going to change. A few weeks later, the same exact thing did it again did it again and when he did it he was advising the people ah, don't tell prophet lovi don't tell him he doesn't like competition he doesn't like competition and and some of these things that he's doing I'm the one who imparted him and why is it not working for you if you are the source of it, why don't you, if God graced you, why don't you do it for yourself? I realize this. God doesn't lift people that deep in their heart undermine others. God will resist. Listen, you rather be resisted by your brother. You rather be resisted by your sister. You rather be resisted by a demon even don't be resisted by God you can't overcome yeah. that is a battle you will never win you can't win that war and in the person the first time they came they saw me functioning they said how are you doing that how do you do that just say oh, God's grace you see, one thing about me is I never tell you what God has given me. You won't know how I do things. I have to love you. And then I'll tell you how God got me to a certain place. When people act like they have something and then you do something, they, how did you do that? Ah, just, I don't know God's grace. <laughs> just to show you, you, you didn't know who you're dealing with. Never let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. This is why you find men of God with terrible character. They're always going to people's church trying to recruit people from people's churches. You know that person doesn't have God in them. From the time I have lived in LA, I've been here for 16 years now, going on to 17. In November, it will be 17 years. I have only gone to two churches. One is where I met Apostle and Bishop Donko. The second one was Pastor Leslie Peters Church. Other than that, I've never been anywhere. And when it was time for me to do what I needed to do, I told him, Lord, show it to the man of God that I'm serving under so that he knows, so there's no conflict. And God showed him a dream.
Then he came and said, ah, I saw you doing this and God, I saw it prospering and exploding. I said, okay, you have spoken to him, so I withdrew. Do you know what I did in those churches? I never preached. I never led prayer. I arranged chairs. I played in the worship team when they needed me to. I played drums. I was a sound man. I was a cleaner. I was an arranger. No one knew what I carried. No one knew. No one knew what was inside of me. The only one who knew was Apostle. And the Lord told me those many years ago, when you begin the work, find him to stand by you. So before anyone set foot on this building, I called the Apostle. I said, Apostle, it's time to do the work. Apostle said, oh, you know, I'm doing this prayer thing. I said, Apostle, God has spoken, but I'll let you do your thing. Apostle called his mentor in Ghana when he went to visit him. He didn't even tell him about it. He just told him, why are you resisting the prophet? Don't you know God has repurposed you for a greater service? The next day, Apostle called me and said, man of God, I am coming. Why would you go to a wizard who is telling you, I'll get you, I'll, I'll make you have a lot of money. He's living in a bush. <laughs> your ministry will explode. Yet then, I'll pray for your ministry. Theirs has never exploded. When people have pride, they think humility is weakness. My own father says it all the time. He says, ah, I have never seen anyone more humble than Lovi. But my humility has made me one of the greatest of all my brothers. But to show you my heart of a servant, all my brothers have benefited from me. I've lifted them up. I've put them up so that their ministries can win people for Christ. If I was somebody that was worried about competition, why would I do what I've done with apostles, with, with prophets and all this? Why would I do those things? But when somebody has no vision from God, they will serve God, but they have pride they will misalign themselves and what God gave them will not increase. It will have a major limitation because God will oppose you. Mm. Even though you pray, even though you seek God, even though you do all those things, God will hear you and bless you, but he will never allow you to be expanded because you are a danger to his kingdom. God doesn't bless rebels. You can be a father and you're a rebel. You can be an elder and you are a, a rebel. That is why the Bible says it like this. Parents, don't offend your children. You can be lifted by God, but then you become an offense. Be people of great humility. That's what has made me what I am. That wherever I go, what I believe in is not my ability. I believe in God who is with me. Yeah. That anywhere I go, I know if I look up and I say, Ah, Father, it's your moment. Things change. Do you know why I kneel down before every service? I don't kneel down so that it looks good. I remind God my place is lower. Your place is higher. I am on my knees so that they also know I am depending on you just like they are. They see me as the answer, but I look at you as the answer. 
if the 24 elders who are in heaven have enough humility to cast their crowns on the floor and to say only you are worthy, yet they're in heaven, they haven't sinned. That shows you how prideful we are on earth. It is a problem. It is a mistake. It is a grave, grave mistake. Lower yourself. Allow King Jesus to lift you. Every time I go to church, I am nervous. Because if he doesn't speak to me, what will I say? The confidence you see is a result of his presence. It's not because I know any better. I don't even prepare messages. Five minutes or ten minutes before I go up is when God speaks to me. I've learned to rely on him. I don't teach from my study. I teach from my experience with him. That's why I don't write notes. I'll write verses he gave me, but I never write notes. I don't teach with notes. I speak from my heart because I speak from a place of knowing. Amen. There is no prayer for humility. Humility is a decision. Don't wait for your mistakes to humiliate you. For you to call it now, I am humble. No, you're just embarrassed. So you can't do what you do. There's a huge difference. Oh, now because I'm embarrassed, I can't do that thing. People look at me like, ah, so I just have to act and not do. No, you're not humble. Something else is restraining you. True humility is understanding of where you are who you are where he has positioned you your place knowing your place is humility just like your children if you have to tell your child hey don't you know i am your father it means that child has forgotten that they are a child. They have made themselves more than you or equal to you. If God has to remind you to be humble, ah, you have become a big head. Humility, children. I plead with you. Please humble yourself to experience God. Don't go through life not knowing the power of his might. Don't go through life not understanding his greatness that can be revealed through you. It's a danger. Now, I want you guys to, to be quiet for a second. Um, don't, don't say anything. Uh, young lady in the back with the band on your head. You, 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 I'm talking to you. No, you can just stay there. I saw a vision. I want to tell you something. I saw a woman in a vision. Okay? And I believe this is connected to your mother. Okay? And I saw a woman called, no, you don't need to go to her. You don't need to go to her, it's okay. I saw a woman called Maria or Marie. Are you listening to me? Like Mary. Are you listening to me? And I saw this woman is in your bloodline, but this woman had conceiving issues. 
Huh? She. Your auntie. She had conceiving issues. And part of these conceiving issues did not just appear to Marie or Maria, which is the same name, different languages. I saw the same thing trickle to other women in the, in the family where they had issues with the cycles, where there was excessive bleeding beyond normal when it came to periods and things like that. But this thing will be stopped by God Amen. because I am seeing a young boy I don't know if he's yours or who this young boy is, but I saw the finger of God being on this young boy. In my vision, this young boy cannot be more than 10 years old. Are you listening to me? Or if he is, he's just a little bit over, but I'm seeing this young boy as the child was young. I saw this child born with a skin condition. You know, like when people have like some kind of eczema or something, dry skin was like a little bit on the spotty side. But I saw God, it was like this thing followed this male child, but it was a means of God taking it and destroying it and stopping it with that boy. Amen. Because the boy I am talking about, I am seeing him like John the Baptist. The hand of God is on this child. But God is using that child as a sign to break this thing that was manifested in Maria or Marie that also touched other women in your family. So God is saying, give him thanks because whatever veil that the enemy had put on you and all the other women in the family has been terminated in Jesus' name. Amen. So... I want you to do this. I want you to grab any seed that you want, but if you can get something with number five, which is just means grace, whether it's five billion, five trillion, get something with number five. Say, Lord, I am praying. May I receive more grace as I put this in your presence, in Jesus' name, and then we'll be back. Can you play that new, new thing? The, the, the song, please. Yeah, thank you. All right, go and give and then we'll be back.
When you call, I'm on my way I'll be there, I won't delay Like Romo, I used to keep taking the wrong road. Now watch how I'm breaking these strongholds. And yeah, you made me beautiful, you know that you the go. You came and gave me a song. I was lost, now I'm found, then you sent me. I was blind, now I see 2020. I give thanks for the day that you came into my life. Where would I be? If it hadn't been for the Lord who was on my side. on my side
All right, welcome back everybody as you keep giving so and connect to the grace in this house, amen. amen. That was, I feel like I say this about every message. It was another transformational message. One of those that you have to go back and listen to again. And I just, there's so many things that he said, but one thing that he said that really stuck out to me was that humility is a decision. You know, sometimes we make things sound so spiritual and so deep, and it really comes down to whether or not you're going to do it, period. Are you going to be a humble man or woman? And when you recognize that you really are everything you are, Paul said, I am all I am by the grace of God, it just changes your mindset. And I just want to say this even before we go, because I was just looking at Papalo, watching him as he was teaching, and there's something he taught me personally, that just really changed my perspective on even just accepting some of the things that God was doing in my life. And he said, because, you know, sometimes we pray for the wrong reasons, just like he said, like you're fasting for the wrong reasons. And I was doing that. I was like, Benny, like, and he just looked at me one day. He said, do you really think I would ever put you in a place and put you there for you to fail? I was just like, oh my gosh, like I was really over here praying and fasting to be sustained in this thing that God gave to me. And he's the only one that will be able to sustain me in that. And so then my relying on the grace of God completely changed where I'm so free and so at peace to say, God, I'm only here because you placed me here. Whatever you want to do, you do it. And it just completely shifted my mindset from that moment. And so I just want to encourage all of us that, listen, you are who you are, where you are, whatever you're doing, it is all by the grace of God. And if you can just align and agree with that, it changes everything. Just agree with God. Amen. Amen. So God bless you guys. Like Prophet said, if you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe. If you did not like this video, make sure you like it. Let's keep spreading the message and winning souls for the kingdom. And we'll be back. Stay tuned. Turn on that bell notification whenever he comes back on so you never, ever miss this awesome treasures that we're getting. Amen. Amen. So God bless you guys. We love you. Jesus loves you more. And we'll see you next time. Amen. Bye.